Welcome back. I'm Corey Congilio, True Fire Instructor, and this is the Fireside Chat. We're answering our third question in this series, and we're getting nice and warm here with the fire. We got our Crown Royal Maple, and uh, Douglas here is going to ask us our third question. Hello, Douglas. Hello, Blues Master Corey, and oh, I see you. You've changed guitars. Oh uh, yeah, you know, I I get bored. I have to say that I'm looking for something new all the time. I often change guitars, like I. Do lady friends, maybe. Oh, 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 oh. Very good, sir. Very good. How about question number oh, three? Question yes. three. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Uh, the question is okay. from Jim from Texas. Hello, Jim. He says uh, that he still loves your newest blues rhythms course. And of course, he looks forward eagerly for this new Texas blues course. Mm, it's going to be a good one. I am from Texas, after all, and my question is, how can we consistently play lower register licks and rips, bass strings, six, five, fourth, or open licks, that would sound cool and stand out, but won't interfere with the bass player? This obviously would be cool to learn against one of your nice Texas-style 12-bar rhythm progressions, but also against some of your funky progressions. Play it in the higher register chords, almost like a complimentary rip, and keeps the chord rip in balance. Oh, I think I understand where you're headed, Jim. Well, thanks for asking. Uh, it's a challenging question to, to answer because let me say that I like to focus on guitar solos, um, often with the inside four strings being the fifth through the second. I find the voice of the instrument speaks well there, and I find myself playing there often. However, if you're talking about more maybe like a that kind of idea, uh, you have a lot of nice real estate with open strings if you're in the key of E. All that kind of like great Stevie Ray Vaughan type of stuff. Um, but if you're referring to some of the other higher stuff, maybe you're playing like a, a riff like... Um, playing a lick down low uh, in this uh, open pattern one and responding with like an E9 chord or something, seventh chord maybe. I would keep your mind open to how they can sort of bounce off, off of one another back and forth. Um, it's a little, like I said, challenging question to ask because so much of my uh, spontaneous soloing happens just like that. It's completely improvised and spontaneous. And I try to play what I hear um, and what I've learned. Uh, so I think you also answered the question yourself a little bit. Ooh, the fire's getting noisy. Um, we're we're kind of calling a response. player. When I talk about getting in the way of the bass player, I usually mean really like standing on those low notes all the time. If we play in a trio, we can play uh, higher chord inversions in that way. make a nice little um, sort of uh, harmony that, that works well with all instruments involved. Particularly if you're just in a trio, you and the bass player can create chords yourself if he's playing a low note and you're playing some higher uh, inversions. It'll make like a nice large chord with just two instruments. So. Use your imagination. Take some of those little examples that I just sort of uh, uh, showed you right there about how you can sort of do the call and response thing. Um, but there's no rules, so if it sounds good, do it. That's all I would say. Okay, so thanks so much for that question. Hopefully it was helpful, um, and we'll move on to the fourth question just when uh, Doug gets back from doing the laundry or parking my car or whatever. So uh, stick around. We'll answer another one.